everyone. Welcome to the channel. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, every Sunday we go live and we talk about finance and budget topics. So if you have any questions or anything that you want to talk about, just drop them in the chat. Or if you're watching this later, leave me a comment down below to let me know what you want to talk about the following week. Okay, so as we get closer and closer to the California fast food minimum wage being $20 an hour, um, we're starting to see articles about the food prices increasing. So of course, I want to talk about uh, how there's like a $22 burrito in San Francisco, and they're saying it's due to inflation. So we're going to go over that article together. Hi, Sugar Sprinkles. I'm good. It's nice to see you in the chat. Um, oh, and I've got on my green dress for St. Patrick's Day, of course. So um, yeah, funny little side story about work, because I know Debbie's going to ask. I work at a movie theater, and this... The, so I think the number one movie nationwide is Kung Fu Panda, but for us, um, it's Dune 2. And I've worked at movie theaters so long that I know how to project actual film. Um, so I am working at a different location this week, and I am the projectionist, and I'm running the film in 70 millimeter, which is kind of fun. Um, I got to be a really good projectionist because I had so many problems happen when I first started managing. One day I should tell you guys the story about like my path with this company. Um, and yeah, basically short, make a long story short, I got promoted and in four days I learned how to both manage and project at a different location that wasn't the one I was managing. So uh, not a lot of training. And of course, I had a lot of, of problems <laughs> with projecting when I first started. But now an old pro, um, knock on wood, but about the dress, I was like, oh, I'm going to wear my St. Patrick's Day dress to work. No, I am not because I forgot. I still think this to the to this day, every time I would wear a dress to work and I was also projecting, I would have like the worst projection problems. And the reason why it's bad to be wearing a dress and have like film projection problems is oftentimes you're like bending down and like you don't want to be doing all that in a dress. So you got to remember to take this dress off and wear pants to work instead. So. All right, we got to talk about this uh, $22 burrito. So I got to find that article. And of course, you guys, let me know if you want to talk about anything else. I know a lot of my viewers right now are telling me that they're struggling because their car insurance is going up. And I, at least for myself, I'm in an interesting position, I'm going to say, where I feel okay financially, but... A $50 a month increase in my budget, I don't have $50 wiggle room in my budget. It's not just like, oh, I'll just save less. No, there's no, there's no wiggle room there. Um, so, so, so if you have to pay $50 more on car insurance, that means we have to find somewhere else to take that money from. And I'm just going to say again, that my, that one of the things that I have recently done is I switched to mint mobile, which took my cell phone bill down to $30 a month, um, which is really great. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what I did. My cell phone bill used to be $81 a month with AT&T and now it's down to 30. All right. Uh, and I like them. They seem fine. Okay. So, wow. I'm going to share that for a second. And then we're going to do $22 burrito. Um, no, burrito. Oops, 22 burrito. There's a 20 top. There's, a, there's already some YouTube videos on this. There's a $22 burrito in California, it says. Okay. So let's uh, try and read. Uh, I like CBS. So let's see. All right, it looks like it's gonna let me read this. Okay, so. 
Owner of San Francisco Mission District's Vaca Birria explains price of his $22 burritos. A, a restaurant owner in San Francisco's Mission District recently responded to concerns from a customer about the rising cost of one of the burritos on his menu. The customer wrote a review online about how the price of the burrito doubled to $22 in two years. The owner explained that the $22 burrito factors in the rising expenses of ingredients and labor, as well as his efforts to improve the quality at the same time. I struggled as a cook to really find who our customer base was, says Ricardo Lopez, the restaurateur behind La Vaca Birria. This is the food I want to make. If I want to continue to make the food that I want to make, if I wanted to continue to keep, you know, testing new items, new menus, that all cost time and money. Picture of the burrito. Okay. Oops. Nope. I'm going to pop up. We'll close that. The cuisine that created the grilled cheese beef burrito on his menu, that does sound really good, comes from a family recipe. His grandfather's technique for making birria, a Mexican meat stew, was the inspiration for his own recipe that built the menu of his food truck. A few years ago, he expanded the concept to his restaurant, which is now known as La Vaca Birria in the Mission. Last fall, the San Francisco Chronicle named their burrito the best in the neighborhood, highlighting the restaurant as one of five delivering a top take on the popular Mission District classic. But earlier this week, one customer said they didn't feel the product was worth the price. I love the grilled cheese birria burrito. Two years ago, it was $11. One year ago, it was $12. Today, it is $22. The customer wrote on Google reviews. Don't get me wrong. It's still a good burrito, but for $24 after taxes, there's so many better food options in the city. Uh, owner of the store. So Lopez decided to respond with a lengthy explanation of his expenses and how they have increased in just the last two years. He mentioned that the price went up uh, of beef went up more than $2 a pound at that time, which he calculates as another $6,000 he has to pay each month. A rise in the cost of labor is another factor. He says that adds another $3,000 a month. I thought, well, this is a great time to respond on that. And, you know, it's the middle of just starting our service. And I just sat down and everything just came out. Like, this is what it kind of costs and looks like to us, Lopez told CPIX. Every ingredient he can think of, from oil to onions, even limes, are more expensive now. Um, and I'll tell you guys something about that in one second. So somebody remind me to talk about tomatoes in a minute. Lopez also said that the burrito isn't the same as some customers remember because he's constantly trying to make his food better by finding ingredients that elevate the cuisine. This also includes a technique that requires extra hours of labor and in some cases more than a day of preparation to make the burrito and other items on the menu up to his standard. Literally everything has gone up in price. There's not one thing I can think of that hasn't gone up since COVID that's come right back down, Lopez said. The customer did ask if the price increase was related to the Chronicle declaring the burrito the best in the mission. Lopez said it did impact his decision because he felt validated to ask more money and ask customers to think of the burrito as a treat yourself experience. But he explained that extra money is just to make ends meet, not to collect some extra cash at a time when many restaurants are struggling in the current economy. If we literally want to stay in business, it's not I'm trying to pay for my Ferrari or anything. It's I'm trying to keep up, you know, with the rent paid, uh, Lopez says. He also hopes this conversation challenges people on how they view Mexican food. While customers have generally accepted the rising price of burgers and pasta across the nation, or except that different versions can be sold at different price points, he notes that Mexican food is often expected to be affordable in all situations. Lopez points out that the tradition and methods of making food from his family and others rivals that of a fine dining experience and hopes customers start to see boy, that there's an ad. Oh, no, no. Oh my God, how do I get rid of this ad? Okay, can't seem to. Can I? All right. Well, is there a close button? This better not take me to the ad. All right. I don't know. Um, Lopez points out, 
Oof. Okay, sorry, got distracted by that. Lopez points out that the tradition and methods of making Mexican food from his family and others rivals that in the fine dining experience and hopes customers start to see Mexican restaurants from a different perspective. Unfortunately, Mexican food is largely associated with being a cheaper option, which can be achieved by choosing lower cost items or keeping low preparation time items. Lopez wrote in his response on Google reviews, I see too many and know too many Mexican restaurants who rely on family working for free to barely pay their bills, having to decide if they can afford to fix equipment that has broken or pay their bills on time, a position we have been in ourselves. And that's something that we'll never go back to. And I hope every damn Mexican restaurant in the Bay area raises their prices. Okay. Let's Curious if there are comments on this that we're able to access. I don't see them. Okay, so that is the article about that $22 burrito. And that's not even factoring in, um, that's not even factoring in the increase in the minimum wage. Okay, let's see here. Okay. Um, all right. Sugar Sprinkles says that life has been lifing her, <laughs> but she's here when she can be. Um, 20. Yeah. The burrito did not look that big. Okay. I have to, okay. I have so like, it's weird that I can have a lot to say on a $22 burrito, but we're going to talk about it because number one, I love some Mexican food. Number two, I live in Los Angeles. We live in California. So like we have great Mexican food. I am a happy, happy, happy person when I get a burrito that's like the size of a baby. Like, you know what I mean? This is the size, I'm not trying to be gross here, but this is the size burrito that I'm like really happy to see. Like when it's wrapped like so big that you can hardly fit anything else inside of it. The other day, okay, and I don't, I think you guys know that I love Taco Bell. Like I really love Taco Bell. I have a Taco Bell game. I'm trying to see if I can see if that's close by. I have Taco Bell game. I have clothes with Taco Bell on it. I have like to like, I love Taco Bell. Um, so the other day I was going to go, I was going to go to Taco Bell after work, but then there's this local mom and pop restaurant called Lucy's and Lucy's was going to be cheaper. Now at Taco Bell, I don't normally just get like one burrito right? and I'd probably get like two or three things, but those two or three things are now costing like 15, 16, $17. I almost never get a drink because I feel like that's a really unnecessary expense, especially if I'm just getting it to go. Um, I think soda is really bad for you. So I try not to drink much soda. So I normally just get water if I get anything or if it's to go, I'm normally taking it home. I just drink water here. But I was like, I'm not paying $17 for Taco Bell. And I love Taco Bell. I was like, I'm going to go support a local restaurant. And I get the same thing. I get a bean and cheese burrito wet with red sauce and sour cream on top. And it's less than $10. And they put chips and salsa in there for free. So... Like that was a no brainer to me, but also like that burrito, they could definitely be charging more for that burrito, like at least $12 for that burrito, even though there's no meat in it, um, because it's big, right. And they're throwing in the chips. Like I would easily pay $12 plus tax for that burrito, $22 for anything it, like that. Once it goes over 20 that's kind of my price point, right? We all have like our own personal thresholds, but, and, and mom, I didn't tell you this, like the, when we, my mom and I went to Subway the other day, I wanted a foot long because I wanted to have half of a Subway sandwich for my dinner. And I wanted to take half to lunch the next day, but I was definitely like looking at the price to figure out like, which was the most economical. I wasn't like, Ooh, which one do I want the most? I was like, which one is one of the cheaper options to get for the, for the 12 inch one. Um, so that's, it's just kind of crazy. And I, yeah, $22 plus tax. And it's also making like the food, ugh, 
The food delivery apps are crazy. Um, so I wouldn't recommend doing that because with their delivery and tax and service fees and tip is crazy. And like $24 plus tax. And what if they're eating it there? Then you're going to also tip on that. That's going to be another like, I tip uh, four on 20, 20, 20%. But like if it's 24, then that'd be closer to, to a, tw a $5 tip, which then we're talking almost $30 for one burrito. And, and I just like, I can't see that. So $20 for sure is like, I'm not even going to consider that anymore. I, I literally wouldn't think twice about going there. Or let's say I'm already there. I don't realize that it's a $22 burrito. I might buy it right there at the spot, but like I'm never going to go again. Something else that I saw happen. Let me see if it's on my receipt. Hold on. I can't show you guys the actual receipt, but I took a picture. Um, so I went to a work dinner this week. And we went, we had a nice dinner. It was like a fancy dinner. We went to, it's called H&H &H Brazilian Steakhouse. There were three of us. So it's like a churrasco. I don't know how to say that. We were charged. Maybe I can show this. We were charged $19.95 for something that says California. And then we were charged an, another $8.40 for something that says benefits. Now this says a 4% benefit fee has been included to defray the cost of wages. Now I don't like that. So that was, so for California it was $19.95 and then for something called benefits, it was $8.40. So for, so for three of us, that is basically like $10 a person in just extra fees. And like that, I don't, I'm not on board with that. Like that's crazy, right? $30 in fees. And the thing is too, like that's at a nice restaurant. And it's, it's so interesting to me because now we're also starting to see, I saw a receipt going around online that said, uh, it was like a 14 year old kid took a girl on a date, went to a restaurant, couldn't afford the tip, like wrote the waitress a note. Waitress was okay with it. She was like, Oh, it was really cute. Like, you know, um, it was nice of him to mention that, that he wanted to leave a tip, but didn't quite have enough. And people are like, well, the business should pay more, but like, I've now seen people tip like crazy amounts. It, it can be like, I think the other day, um, I saw somebody make almost $280 in tips on their eight hour shift. Plus they're making like a lot of money an hour. And I think it made their pay over $50 an hour, 50 an hour. Like businesses aren't going to be like, Oh, okay. Customers, you don't have to tip and we'll pay our employees 50 an hour. And it was really common somewhere else. I worked where the servers were making between $32 and like $45 an hour was common. So between 32 and 45 was pretty common. And then if they worked on a night with an event, there was like an automatic 20% gratuity included. And that could take their wages all the way up to like $83, $85 an hour. Like that's crazy. I mean, like that's great, but that's a lot of money. So I don't see businesses absorbing the cost of that. And I know we got a little sidetracked. I got a little sidetracked from talking about the $22 burrito specifically, but that is not even a chain. That guy isn't even going to have to pay his employees $20 an hour. So that's, and remind me, I wanted to talk about tomatoes. So um, that's not even including the possibility to need to pay his workers $20 an hour. Um, so the thing that I wanted to say about the tomato, so the reasons why he's citing for needing to charge $22 for that burrito is that the cost of beef doubled and that the cost of almost everything has gone up. He didn't mention that like electricity has gone up. 
Um, but it has like the utilities they've said are going up. What was it? We, we've read that recently, like 13% and they're wanting, they're wanting the utility companies are wanting to increase that even more. So he's, you know, he's saying that just between the cost to like actually buy the ingredients, he did mention that labor has gone up. So, um, California's minimum wage went up even outside of the $20 fast food minimum wage that's about to be implemented on April 1st. So he's just like, Hey, costs have gone up and he's trying to like make sure that the ingredients are good. But we just started selling burgers at my theater. My theater is not full dine in, but we are like looking at expanding our menu items. And so we were sent like a list of things that we needed to purchase. And one of those things was tomatoes and, um, I, and it gives us the price that we're supposed to pay. And I noticed that the price was more than double. So I was like, Hey guys, like, is this, do I have the right item number? Is this the right price? Because this looks like it's, it's more than double. Like, is this a, like, is there like a half portion of this that I can order? And they were like, no, there's like some tomato crop damage. Um, they always say that there's crop damage, like whenever the prices go up. But so the cost of tomatoes more than doubled. And like the tomatoes weren't cheap to begin with. I want to say that it said it was like $15 for like, I don't know, a dozen tomatoes. And then it was like $35. And to me, it's like just at that point, just don't include the tomato on the burger. Um, okay. Oh, they're going to be friends. Sugar, Sprinkles, and Debbie. I love this. Okay. Uh, Joshua says, would love to hang out. Um, that, you know, I would love to like get to know some of you guys a little bit more as well. Uh, but I appreciate you popping in and saying hello. Uh, Debbie says she doesn't really have any, uh, socials. Uh, she stops by the room of, uh, Jenny Silver and I from the unemployment days of, of the pandemic. Yes. And you know, I was just thinking about Jenny Silver. Uh, I think that it's time I haven't spoken. I haven't reached out to her in a while. So it's definitely time. I want to see how she's doing. I want to see how her journey with YouTube and she's been on TikTok a lot. I want to see how that's going for her. I also, I'm at the point where the channel Shelly's Millions has been losing money the last two years. And I know if a business loses money five years in a row, it's no longer considered a business. It's considered a hobby. And I want, I know she's making a lot of content about being a business owner. I might need a video about dissolving a business. Okay. Hi, Joy and Joey. Hope you're doing well. Infinity, we were talking a lot about you. Yep. Car insurance. Yeah. I was hoping you were going to hop in uh, the last couple weeks because we were talking a lot about the car insurance last week. Car insurance is so expensive for even my 20 year old car that I almost want to sell the car and take Uber everywhere. I'm sure Uber is about to go up too. Um, so oops, ah, I don't want to edit anything. Okay. So yeah, that's, ugh, it's kind of, kind of crazy how much insurance is going up. And I was just saying at the beginning of this stream that like at, for myself included with car insurance going, up, I don't have that extra money in my budget. So that means that I need to cut something. I did recommend switching to Mint Mobile. Well, I'm not recommending it, but look into Mint Mobile. I really like them. Took my cell phone bill was $81 with AT&T all the way down to $30 with Mint Mobile. And so for my service has been just as good. I even traveled internationally with Mint Mobile. I kept my same phone number with Mint Mobile. They're not sponsored. I just like them. I want you guys to save money. And actually, this is a tip that I learned from you guys. You guys were like, Shelly, why are you paying so much for your cell phone bill? You should check out Mint Mobile. So I listened to you guys. I checked out Mint Mobile. And now I'm doing all my business. Uh-oh. Uh what am I doing? I have done something to my screen that I didn't mean to do. Very interesting. Let's hit cancel. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that for a second. Anyway. Um, so cutting down on your cell phone bill would be one thing. Check your subscriptions, guys. Um, I think that I mentioned that 
I still have Netflix, but now I have the version with commercials and I actually like it. I like that it gives you a little break to like get up and go to the bathroom or run and get a glass of water or just kind of like not have you just staring at the TV zoning out for all that time. Um, yeah, I am so happy when I get a giant burrito. Like, I want to say that maybe I would pay $20, $22 for a burrito, but I don't think I would. I would pay, like I would, I said $20 was my threshold. If they advertised it at $19.99, and that's like a whole like psychological thing. A lot of times businesses do advertise it at, at like $19.99, knowing that with tax and tip and everything, it's going to come out to be over $20, but like mentally that $19.99 is still cheaper than, um, than 22. Like that is a lot of money. Like that's, but at the same time, I don't think like restaurant owners are making a lot of money. And in that article about the $22 burrito in San Francisco's mission district, the restaurant owner said that a lot of times Mexican restaurants rely on family members to work for free. And I'm just going to say that, um, I hope I'm allowed to say this, but one of uh, my coworkers, he says his parents own a restaurant and I'm not sure if they just don't drive anymore or if they're busy doing other restaurant things, but he can't work on Mondays because every Monday he goes and he picks up like supplies for them. So it is really common for, for family members to help out. I would like to say that that's true in any family business. I remember um, for a large part of my life, my mom worked at the swap meet. Um, you might be like, Shelly, how did she work at the swap meet? She did extreme couponing and she would resell the things that she got um, at the swap meet. But like it was still a better deal for the people getting it because they didn't have to do all the work of chasing all the deals. Um like her friends would give her things. We, we bought storage units and I say we, I was little, I didn't have any money. My mom bought storage units before like storage wars or anything was out. Um, I remember that my mom still to this day has a truck, uh, because that's been her life was like loading up that truck with stuff. We got out of storage, stuff people donated to us, stuff she found on the side of the road, um, and then later, like mixing some of the used items with, uh, stuff that she got by doing extreme couponing. So, um, I definitely was like expected to help go to the storage units and load the stuff onto the car. My grandmother helped us go to the sto storage units and load stuff onto the car. Um, when I was too young to stay, well, yeah, kind of too young to stay at home by myself. Why did I have to go to, my mom would make me go to the swap meet with her. I remember uh, at one point we had a van and she would, maybe she just needed the help. I was being a nice daughter. Cause I feel like I was like 13 or 14 at the time. Maybe I was grounded and my mom didn't want me to stay at home by myself. I don't know what it was, but I was pretty old and my mom was still having me go to the swap meet with her in the morning. Maybe it was already starting to get heavy lifting or mom, if you remember why I had to go to, with you after the age of 11. Let me remind me in the comments. Um, or maybe she like paid me $20 to help unload the car or something. But like, I definitely remember getting up really, really early going to the swap meet with my mom, helping her get all set up. And then I would like straight up, go back to sleep on the floor of the van. Like, so I, th I think it's common in, in businesses that are owned by individuals who have families <laughs> um, to rely on the help of the, of, of all of the members of the family to get it done. J probably just like this person's restaurant business. Like my mom was not rolling in the dough, um, by selling items at the swap meet. Like there were good days. There were bad days. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Alex says coming April 3rd, I will be charged a whopping $560 for the first payment of my car insurance. 
And every month after that at $280 for four months. How insane. Yeah, I want to not have a car now. A lot of you guys are saying that you're considering not having cars. You know, it's this is like, I also wanted to share this. And I'm going to say it with some frustration because this was a frustrating day for me. But I also want to say it with compassion. I I don't have the solution. Some of you guys are like, Shelly for governor or mayor or I don't know, assembly member. I do not have the answers. But we absolutely have to do something as a, as a community, as a state, um, as just individuals about the homeless population here in California. We really do. And I know that, like, I have relatives that are like, I'm not helping someone get off the street. Like, why should I have to help with their problems? But those same relatives, I know that, I also know that they would literally give people the shirt off their back. So they say one thing, but then I think if they actually like saw how far gone some of these people are and how much help they need, I don't think that they would feel that way. But I'm going to tell you the three things that happened to me on my drive home. And mom, I don't want you to worry, but like, and I'm careful, right? But like, these are three things on one drive home. I actually think it was the drive home from the last time I was visiting my mom. Okay. So number one, I got like, I was, I don't know why I was driving with GPS. Maybe I wasn't coming home from my mom's, but anyway, um, it was like road hazard ahead. And what had happened was I was on the freeway and on the side of the freeway in the right hand lane was an upside down overturned shopping cart with what appeared to be un home unhoused people's belongings in it. So like that is dangerous that you could just be like driving down at high speeds and there's like a shopping cart that has like, because a lot of the underpasses on the freeways are like at angles. And so there's lots of like homeless encampments like up towards the top, right? And then as you get closer to the bottom is where the freeway is. And as you get closer to the top would be like where the overpass is and cars are driving on street level. And then down here is where like the freeway is, right? So down here in the right hand. So if you have a shopping cart up here, which is where I normally see people going over, then that's not too hard for the shopping cart to like roll down that hill and into the lane of traffic, which is what happened. Okay. So number one, overturned shopping cart in freeway traffic lanes, which is so, 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 so dangerous, right? It's like, because also sometimes those shopping carts are metal and like, they're like graded. So you can, when you're driving at high speeds, it's hard to see. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, different section of the freeway. But again, the same kind of slope situation where there's people kind of living up towards the top of the slope. And then there's like area on the way down before you hit the freeway. Top of the slope, fire. Totally a fire. This, this is problematic for two reasons. Number one, you know, they think it was a homeless encampment that caused the damage underneath the 10 freeway. Then what was the other thing? Then, and this is more selfish, but like if there's a fire going on under the freeway, then it's going to slow traffic while the firefighters come and put it out. It puts homes in danger that are in the area, that kind of thing. And then like, it just causes a lot of damage to city property, especially with that freeway being closed. That was back like in November. Um, and they've, they've said before, like, I think that there were several years ago now, Santa Clarita, Santa Barbara, there were fires there that were caused by a homeless encampment and it caused millions of dollars of damage. So what I would love to see is rather than the government, but we're going to go through an example that I used to do during the pandemic again in a minute, right? And this is why I don't have the answers. Um, like I would rather see the government spend the million of dollars that they use to repair the freeway on finding a long-term solution for 
getting these people the help and care that they need. But the thing is, like, there's not room in the budget to do that. or And or some people don't want us to spend our government dollars in that way. So then there's like a battle about doing it. But anyway, so the third thing with the unhoused that happened on my way home on this same drive. Now, every day when I'm getting off the off ramp to come home, it's kind of like a circular off ramp where I'm up on the freeway. And then you take the circular off ramp and you wind up under the freeway. And people also sometimes live under the freeway on the sidewalks. But it was dark. It was late. And there was a man and he was crossing the street and he was all in dark colors. P.S. Like, if you guys did not learn this lesson as a child, please teach this to your children. If, and maybe us adults need reminders as well. I don't know how the unhoused people would do this because they just have to kind of wear whatever they get. But if you are walking outside at night, try and wear light colored clothing, reflective clothing. Like this wouldn't be a good outfit to go walk around at night. It's too dark. It's hard to see. But anyway, this gentleman was wearing like dark colors. He was crossing the street, not at a crosswalk, just in the middle of the street underneath the freeway where you're coming off the rounded off ramp. But he was crossing from like one encampment on one on the side of the street where I was trying to drive to the other side where there's a totally different encampment. And I, it's dangerous for drivers. It's dangerous for the unhoused people. And I don't know what the solution is. Here's the analogy I used to give during the pandemic, right? Um, similar situation about unemployment being broken. We know there's a homeless problem. It's going to take some money somewhere to fix it. So then where does that money come from, right? They say, oh, well, we don't have the money or the resources to fix the problem. So they just let it keep getting worse. But then when there's damage done, like under the freeway, you have to spend the money to like make the roads and the freeways and all of that safe again. So you're spending the money somewhere, right? So I would rather see us spend the money up front to try and help the people than to spend the money fixing the damages that, that they've caused somewhere down the line. And I, I'm sure that there's people that are like, you know, well, we shouldn't have to pay for those damages. Um, they should, but like, like my mom likes to say, you can't get blood out of a turnip. So they, they don't have money. It, you know, what would be nice um, is if, if, if those people caused the damage to have them like help rebuild it, like give them a job helping to like repair what they broke down, like maybe work it off kind of like community service I don't know. All I know is that is a big, big, big issue. Um, and it's making it unsafe to drive. I am not sure how Alex's comment made me like get on that spiel. Okay. Ben says, I cook a lot from home because eating out is too expensive. Yeah. So $20 is my price point where I'm just going to like cook at home. And you know what? We all love... Okay, so it's still really cheap at Costco. I don't have a Costco membership. I'm a single person. I feel like for me at Costco, it's not a good deal for me to go in and like shop because I'm just going to wind up having too much and it's going to go bad. But Costco has the, if you have a bigger family, those rotisserie, the rotisserie chickens from Costco, but they have the rotisserie chickens everywhere. Those, okay, it's my favorite favorite meal. I will eat like one leg and a side of hot cheat, like the flaming hot Cheeto puffs, the ones that used to be $1.99 a bag, but now they're $2.99 a bag. They're slightly healthier. Maybe it's the puffer corn. I think it's the puffer corn, whatever the $2.99 bag is. I'll do like a handful of those and a chicken leg. So I can do that twice because it's got two chicken legs. And then I'll like do one breast with like, um, some broccoli, do the other 
breast with more broccoli, then you can usually like pull the meat off. There's still meat after that. And I will mix that with like some Greek yogurt or mayonnaise and make like a chicken salad. So you can get like five meals out of that rotisserie chicken. And I think even at like a regular grocery store, it's only like $10. So if I can get five meals for $10, not including like my my $2.99 puffer corn. So we're up to 13. And then let's say I pay, I don't know, $3 for a head of broccoli. And so three for the chips, three for the broccoli. And then what else did I say? Oh, three, three for Greek yogurt to mix up, make uh chicken salad. So I'm going to have five meals, three, six, nine for $19 for five meals versus 22 for one. And there's no like extra gas, like because if I'm grocery shopping, so yeah. All right, okay. Merle Man 17, can I play some songs by Cupcake? They're all really good songs. I'll check out Cupcake. Ah, uh, oh, Merle. Merle Man 17 really wants me to play some Cupcake songs. Joel. Good to see you in here. Remember, all that stimulus check and extra unemployment boost we got in 2020, 2021 seems like we're paying it back with interest now. Yeah. And some of what they're saying about inflation and the interest rates and all of that is that the government like kind of did that on purpose. They were like, oh, prices, I don't, I don't understand, but like basically like prices are getting too high. So we're going to raise in interest rates to force prices to come down. This does not make any sense to me. I got to look more into that, but ugh, I feel like there was something else that I said I was going to look up, but I don't. Okay. I talked about the tomatoes. I talked about the three things with the unhoused people. And I, I do want to be, it's interesting because right. I'm on next door all the time. And you'll see a lot of people that's like, there's a homeless person. We have to get rid of them. We, they have to force them to move. And then there's people saying, well, where, you know, where are you going to force them to go? Right. And on the one hand, I don't believe that you should force anyone to do something against their will. Right. That's a very real thing. If someone is happy where they are, for whatever reason, does another person have a right to force them to go somewhere else? And that's the part that I struggle with because sometimes separate night, not part of the three dangerous things, but last night when I was coming home from work, there's a homeless man on the side of the road. He had like a wrench, like a like the biggest, craziest metal wrench that I had ever seen in my life. Like I'm talking like this big. Okay. And the metal portion of the wrench was like, probably like, honestly, like the size of both of my hands. I have literally seen unhoused people approach cars and just start like hitting them with those wrenches. This, this person didn't, but like, I have to be hyper aware when I'm driving home to make sure something like that doesn't happen. So what in the world is going on? I think maybe this is where I was going with Alex's comment. Like what in the world is going on in California? So we're combating really bad situations with the un, with unhoused. And I don't, I don't have the answer. I want to be compassionate, but I also would like to drive down the street and not worry that the unhoused man with the giant wrench thing is, isn't going to hit my car. Right. I want to be able to drive down the freeway without worrying that there's going to be a fire with that due to unhoused and without like worrying that I'm going to accidentally hit somebody crossing the freeway or the street and, or that they're going to like lose control of their shopping cart and I'm going to accidentally run that over. Right. Like it's, it's dangerous. So anyway, I don't have the ideas, but I do know that we need to do something. So we've got this crazy unhoused situation in California. We've got the rising insurance cost and it's not just auto insurance, it's homeowners insurance and it's medical insurance. All that's gone up this year. 
So with the cost rising and it kind of just being a yucky place to live, like, I don't know, California, it's not it. We do have the beaches, but a lot of times there's crazy unhoused people there too. Like, I just don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I think it's a beautiful place to live. And other times I'm like, ooh, it's it's gross. <laughs> it's just gross. I don't know how else to, to describe it. So guys, I live here in California, but I think it's gross. All right. I'm way behind on the comments. All right. Family Dollar says, I will be unemployed starting April 18th because my Family Dollar store is closing down in Southern California. Thousands of people are about to lose their jobs. I'm sad as I am a manager. I'm so sorry to hear that. Can I, do you know any specifics about why that is? Like, why are they closing? Are you guys not getting enough business? Is it too hard to be a dollar store? Is it too hard to find products to sell? Is the rent too high? Or is it that people aren't shopping? Because my guess is that with all of these prices rising, right? And, and even someone like myself saying, okay, we have to figure out how to cut our cost. That one of, one of those ways would be to like start shopping at the dollar store, right? Um, so I'm sad for you too. I'm also just in general, I worry, right? About retail managers. Retail managers seems to like be going away. Also, if you can, servers make really good money. Bartenders make really good money. I'm just going to assume that if you were a manager of the family dollar, right? Um, I think that you would be able to pick up being a server really quickly. I'm going to assume that you were on your feet a lot and like carrying kind of like heavy boxes and unpacking shipments and things like that. Because the server trays depending can be pretty heavy. But if you're, if you can be on your feet, if you can carry a serving tray, um, servers, bartenders make really good money. Also fast food is about to pay $20 an hour. And I don't know what you were making. I don't know if you were salaried or not, but $20 an hour is nothing to sneeze at if you can get one of those fast food jobs. I'm really sorry to hear that your store is closing. I was just talking with someone else last night and they were saying that um, the two banks near them, that those branches are going to be closing. And mom, did I tell you this? I don't think I told you this. I was trying to wire my friend, my friend Phidias, who's on YouTube. Ugh, he's got like 2 million subscribers. He's in some hot water. He's in a really nice, he's a nice person. I got to maybe talk about that from my perspective one day. Real to summarize that he went to Japan. He, tra he makes videos like I traveled across Japan for free. But, but he does it in ways that aren't really on the up and up. Like, I don't know if you guys remember, but one time he hopped on one of my lives and he's like, yeah, just hop the turnstile at the bus stop or at the train station. I was like, no, don't tell people like not to do that. But, but he does things like that. Right. Um, and he did that in Japan and it did not go over well, but he's such like a kind person and, like he doesn't do that to be vindictive. He does it to like see if he can and for like the video purpose, in my opinion. But anyway, he recently stayed with me. That's why I was making that Apple Vision Pro video. And uh, he sold a car as part of that process. And he was like, can you just send me the money? And I was like, yes. So I was going to wire it to him. Anyway, mom, they're closing down that Wells Fargo branch. Um, it's the Wells Fargo like I've gone to whenever I need to like do banking and I visit my mom that's the bank I go to. So that now that's, that's three banks that I've recently heard are closing. So now banks are closing, family dollars closing, and we already anticipate that some fast food chains are not going to make it. Like what's going to make it? So our businesses are closing in California too. So we've got a big problem with homelessness. Businesses are closing. Like what is going on? I like California. I like my little house. I think I like this little life. Like, but it's getting harder and harder for me to like justify staying here in California. Okay. Alex says, I hear family dollar and dollar tree are closing so many stores nationwide. Sorry, family dollar back to EDD and looking for work could take months. I'm praying for you. Okay. And family dollar or anybody else that's watching, 
go ahead and start applying now. And look, I get it, right? You might want to stay till the very end. And like your whole, like your picture is family dollars. So I'm not sure if this is like a business that you own and operate, but if it's not, if you work for an employer and you find a better job or an equivalent job, just go now. Go and take that job. Accept that job now. Like I get wanting to stay, wanting to see it through to the end. And maybe with your new employer, maybe you could work out working some shifts at Family Dollar. But if you're not the owner, if if you work for an employer and they're just giving you the ax, they're not offering to relocate you as a manager. They're not offering you like, hey, you can work at a different store, but um, as a clerk or whatever. I, I, I hate to say this, right? But your employer does not care about you. They're about to like just let you go with no consequences. So start looking now. Um, and if you find something better, do not feel obligated to stay till the bitter end. Okay. Um, Sugar Sprinkles says, yep. $19.99 girl math because that's the price of the burrito. Sugar sprinkles. Yes, I mentioned about the tomatoes. Those are double in price. Everybody, uh, sugar sprinkles is reminding everybody to please like the live, which I would definitely appreciate. Um, Alex is saying, or better yet, driving without car insurance. Kidding. That's bad. All right, Alex. And I love that you brought that up. Can't believe that I haven't brought that up before. Yeah, it's not legal to drive without car insurance, but here's the thing, right? If families are forced between choosing to be able to go to work to pay their rent and paying their car insurance, I think that there are going to be a lot of people who, who now drive on the road without car insurance, which is just going to cause, which P.S., like in addition to that being bad, that also contributes to everybody else's rates going up. So I have full coverage on my car right now. So if someone else hits me, it's, it's going to be covered even if they don't have insurance. But if lots of claims start going through my insurance company, from other uninsured motorist, um, that's going to cause my, like, it's not, it wouldn't be my fault if I got hit by somebody else. That wouldn't be what caused my rate to go up. But just in general, if insurance companies have to start paying out a lot of claims because other people aren't insured, they're going to ri raise everyone's rates. You know what I mean? It's getting crazy. Okay. Sugar Sprinkle says, yes, the homeless population is wild and it's heartbreaking. There's so many empty lots and stores, but they won't use it for good things like that. I feel so bad. It's not right. Yeah. And the other kind of thing, there is some funding, right? But then communities, individuals, homeowners, parents are like, I don't want that in my area. I don't want, you know, to drive past homeless facilities. You know what I would love to see, honestly, including in places like Beverly Hills, especially in places like Beverly Hills, if you have 10 units or more, you have to like provide free housing to, to somebody and low income housing to somebody, even on 10 units, you have eight, eight people that you're price gouging one low income family. And like one, you have to donate. I'm sure people would just renovate and make the buildings like a nine unit apartment building or something. But like, if you have a lot of units, I do think like you need to provide an affordable unit. I think you need to look into like, if you can afford to own 10, a 10 unit apartment, like you have to look deep into yourself and see if there's a way that you can help more with those kinds of things. I also think Beverly Hills, like, I don't know what they do, like why their police I don't know why there's not homeless people there already. You know what I mean? Um, it's not something shady going on there. That's what I think. Okay. Ben says, my cousin was attacked by a homeless person in San Francisco and he got a few cuts and bruises. The homeless crisis is out of control. It really is. So at some point we have to say, you know, like 
every everybody's going to have to take some homeless people near them, whether they are very excited about it or not. Um, and I think we also need to acknowledge that for the most part, whether they're in an official house or not, that they're near us. And I think, you know, we have to say, sometimes you'll just be down the street and you'll see somebody with their pants down using the restroom on the side of the street. So, I mean, unfortunately, kids are getting exposed to things like that anyway. So I would a lot rather have those people in a safe place where they could ha have a bathroom, where they could use that behind closed doors. And then I think we also, though, it can't just be like providing housing because I think a lot of the people need mental, mental health assistance as well. Okay. Join Joey says you agree, but a lot of homeless don't want help because of all the rules. They say some places are more scary than to be on the streets. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that as well. Ah, my mom says this episode is depressing. Is there some good news? I don't know. I don't know about good news. I don't know. I don't, I don't have any. <laughs> oh, we will end on some good news. Someone asked me about updates on my vision board. So we'll do that. And that should be, that should be good. Um, yeah. Uh, Sugar Sprinkle says it's real life though. So you can't always keep ignoring stuff like this. It needs to be talked about. It does, but like, I don't have, I don't have solutions. So like maybe I'm not contributing anything positive. I, I don't know, but these are things on my mind. I'm sharing my experience about my drive home. That was real for me. Um, Hi, Sylvia. No worries. Yeah, chicken salad. And one of the ways that I make it healthier, you guys are probably like Greek yogurt, but you can really substitute Greek yogurt for a lot of things. If you're mixing it in with like, um, like to make chicken salad, you can put some like dill, D-I-L-L, -L, like the pickle spice. You can put that in there. Um, like, and sometimes Greek yogurt, like with salt, can substitute for like sour cream. It can substitute for mayonnaise. Like, is it great? No, but that's like a healthy high protein option to do that. Um, so it might be a little bit weird, but it's not too bad. Ah, sugar sprinkles is reminding everybody to send some love to the live as well on the right hand side. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay. Family dollar says family dollar is closing because of inflation company lost billions last year. It's just a sinking ship. I'm so sorry to hear that. Are they not offering to relocate you? That's so crazy. Thank you for the like sugar, uh, spell legacy like death. Good to see you in here. Um, family dollar. They're offering me like three K to stay to the last day. Maybe I'll stay, but maybe not. It depends. Yeah. I mean, just start looking now, you know, see if there's, if there's something better out there. And again, I know through the whole pandemic, you still had, you had the family dollar name. You had the family dollar logo. Clearly, like if that's your whole name on, on this, like it's something that you enjoy and that you're proud of. And I love that. And let me just tell you the fact that you're proud of, of the company and that you're trying to stay to the end, that will mean a lot to future employers. Um, but the advice that I was giving during the pandemic is what is your dream job really? I know I mentioned being a server because that could like make a lot of money. Really sit back and think about what you want to really, really do. Maybe you use, maybe you go ahead, you stay to the last day. Maybe you don't worry about finding a new job in a similar industry right now. Maybe while you're on unemployment, you'll have to look for work now each week, three, three places, uh, but really apply to your dream jobs and maybe also take some online courses on like Skillshare, Udemy, get some certificates and level up your career. Because something that I hate to admit, but as I get older, being like I mentioned being on my feet and carrying things and like the weird hours and things like that. Um, a lot of times, shoot, sorry. I thought I heard like a knock at my door. Um, a lot of times that I totally lost my train of thought. Um, it's getting harder to work like 
a managerial job where you're on your feet like that, a retail managerial job. So maybe explore like truly something that you're really, really passionate about that might be more like an office job if that's something that interests you. Okay. Sugar Sprinkles says, the world is so sad and it's depressing. It's not even scratching the surface, but I appreciate me talking about it and bringing more awareness. It can't go ignored. We're all struggling. Yeah. There's a lot of articles too that say everybody's just one paycheck away or one like, like medical bill away from being homeless. It's really, ugh, it's, it's really an issue. Is there any good news living in California? Not right now. Um, Joy Joy says, I'm just kidding. We all have our health and our roof over our head. Yes, most of us do. One of my viewers I know was telling me that he was about to experience homelessness in uh, San Diego. So thoughts go out to him. Okay, family dollar. When I get a new job, I'll change the logo to whoever I work for. My dream job is to own my own restaurant, a Mexican restaurant with many of my grandma's recipes. That would be really cool. I'm not sure it's the right time to go into the restaurant business with all these costs soaring. But if that's something you're interested in, start watching YouTube videos on it. See how to like make that profitable um, and then go for it. Because I also believe that if you really put your whole heart behind something that you can make it. So let me be your cheerleader and say that if that's what you really want, go for it. But at the same time, if it doesn't work out, please don't blame me. <laughs> uh, but I but I do believe in you. Whatever you want, I want to see that come like materialize for you. Okay. My mom says, yes, most of us do have, still have something to be grateful for. Most of your life has been full of tough times, but, but that young lady you're watching now is my bright spot. I find joy in that amazing person. Oh, thanks mom. Love you too. Okay. Vision board update. Okay. Lose 20 pounds. That is not going well, but I have made an appointment with a nutritionist. It's really, Oh, also guys, maybe be a doctor, go back to school and just be a doctor because Trying to get an appointment right now, it's literally like six months out for all sorts of things. Um, pretty much every doc, every medical field, like physical therapist, eye doctors, nutritionist, all of it, six months out. So clearly we need we need more doctors in California too. Use cell phone less. Uh, I'm gonna say that's 50-50. Play the violin. I have finally done that. Change living room furniture. I haven't done that yet. Paint patio furniture, not yet. I haven't made four official YouTube videos. Okay, I'm just going to say, let's see, uh, take take mom to see the hat. I'm reading a lot of books. I do feel like I'm investing in myself. Um, I have not taken any golf and, and tennis lessons. Oh, I'm not contributing the federal maximum to my 401k. Uh, I feel like I'm doing things that have lowering my blood pressure, but I haven't checked officially. Spend more time with mom. I feel like I've been spending more time with my mom. She would have to answer that. Okay. All right. Andrew says that he's grateful that I do this every Sunday and that I'm real and talk about the challenges we all face. It's a good support to have. Thank you so much for saying that. I really enjoy doing this and spending this time with you guys and just kind of sharing some of my concerns and, you know, some of my successes, um, with you guys as well. And yeah, we're kind of all in it together. I think kind of in, in similar situations, striving for better and trying to figure it out, trying to figure out the best way to go about that. So as I learn some of those ways with me, like Mint Mobile, not sponsored, it's just like, you guys were telling me for so long, do Mint Mobile, do Mint Mobile. And I was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm okay. But then like when I needed to trim cost, I'm like, yeah, I got to find a way to add $50 back to my budget. Guess it's time to like see if Mint Mobile's good. And I do like them. And that that has saved me $50, $51 a month to be exact. So that's been a really good thing for me. All right, guys. Um, I'm sorry if this one was a bummer. It wasn't, wasn't really meant to be. Um, Happy St. Patrick's Day. Don't drink and drive. Um, be safe out there. And uh, let me know in the comments down below if you're watching this later, what you guys want to talk about next week. All right. Thanks so much for watching Shelly's Millions. I'll see you next Sunday, 11 a.m.